Good morning and happy 72 hours, friends. If you're new here, my name is Mel and this is gonna be the start of one of my favorite readathons. I host a 72 hour readathon with Cassidy from Covers with Cassidy and Lexi from Books with Lexi. This time we're going to be joined by Monica from A Little Bit of Monica. And basically we just read as much as humanly possible for 72 hours. And we go hard for this readathon. We just don't read a little bit here and there. No, I am aiming to read like seven books in these 72 hours. I want to go hard. It is currently 6.30 in the morning. I do have to go to work. The readathon starts at five o'clock my time tonight. So I figured let's go ahead and do a spin. And that way I can kind of be thinking about what I want to read for the rest of the day. And I don't have to get home and make like a split second decision right before the reading starts. So I'm going to flip you guys around. We're going to show, I'm going to show you the wheel and we'll see what my prompt ends up being. And then when I get home, I'll let you know what I'm going to be reading for that prompt. All right. So we have our wheel. Let's do our first spin and see what we end up with. This thing goes on forever. Okay, so we got a new release. Hopefully that will be pretty easy. I also forgot to mention you guys that we have two wheels and in your comfort zone wheel and an out of your comfort zone wheel. I am going to be spinning the out of comfort zone wheel. I think for my first day, you can only do one wheel per day. And since Thursday is a shorter day, I think I'm going to go with out of my comfort zone first. We're going to just kick it off with a bang. We're going to kick it off with a risk and see how it goes. So I got a new release or a book released in 2024 or 2023, and it has to be a book that is out of my comfort zone. So I'm gonna be thinking about that the rest of the day and I will see you guys at five o'clock. Okay, so I am finally home from work and I have picked my first book. I think I'm gonna go with one that I just literally yesterday picked up at the bookstore and that is The Lies of An A Jungo. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But this is like, I think, an African-inspired fantasy novella about a world where there is no water. And in order to use water from a neighboring country, the people of this world have their tongues cut out. And I think our main character is on the source for water. So... I don't know. It sounds really interesting. It's only like 70 pages, so I should be able to read it pretty quickly. It was published in 2023, so it does count for the new release prompt. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to give this a go. I've heard it's dark, which honestly, selling point for me. I don't know what that says about me. But I wanted to show you guys, because I forgot to do this this morning, my reading nook for the weekend. For the most part, I think I'm going to be staying in my library as much as I can. And then a little bit at night, I may end up going to the bedroom because I don't have an air mattress. Otherwise, I would just sleep in here. But let me flip you guys around and show you what my reading nook looks like for the weekend. Okay, so this is my current setup for the weekend. This is kind of my library room. It's where I'm going to be spending the majority of the weekend. We have books on both sides here, but this chair is pretty much where I'm going to be spending the majority of my time. This is my little reading nook. Obviously, we have a stand over here for my laptop and everything. I've got my Kindle clicker. I do need to go find my Kindle. Kindle stand. Well, Kindle stand there. So, you know, hands-free peak laziness reading. We're here for it. Ignore the ottoman and the stairs because Ollie has got to be sitting next to me at all times. And if he can't get next to me, he's just going to cry and impair my reading. So... I have actually drug the ottoman from my big chair in here for him to sit on. That should help keep him pretty quiet and happy. At least I'm hoping it will. I probably need to go find him a blanket because he loves laying on a fuzzy blanket. But anyway, this is my current setup. I am planning to have a permanent butt imprint in this chair because I'm going to be doing all of the reading reading. You may see me a little bit go into the bedroom because honestly, at some point, I'm just not going to be able to remain upright. So I will be doing that at some point. But yeah, this is my current setup. I think it's going to be a great time. I'm going to go change clothes and we're going to get ready for kickoff. two hours into the readathon and I have finished my first read which is The Lies of the Anjongo. I have a little bit of mixed feelings about it. I didn't check in with you guys before this because it was only 87 pages so I just kind of flew through it. In the beginning, actually let me back up, this is following a boy called Tutu who is almost 13 and at 13 years of age their tongues are removed and given as a sacrifice to the Anjuno. A Jungo? A 
Jungo, I think is how you say that. And they are given as a sacrifice in order to get water in return. They live in a desert and there is really no water to be found. Everyone is slowly dying. And all of these children before they turn 13 are given the opportunity to go out and look for more water, but most of them don't return and none of them have ever found water. Tutu doesn't really want to do that, but when his mother is found wasting away, dying of dehydration, he decides that he is going to try to save her and go find water. And the story takes off from there. This is definitely a parable of sorts. It is got things to say and I think it says those well. I liked the message. I liked the thought process in this. I thought that for the most part it was pretty well paced and it really well written. It's written in kind of a, I'm not going to say lyrical kind of thing, but it's not overly simple. It definitely reads more like a story would, like someone's telling you a story. And I thought that that was really well done. I am not a huge fan of novellas and you guys know this. This is why it was an out of my comfort zone read because they just don't give me enough. I'm always wanting more. And I think the magic that is used in here I just was like wait that kind of came out of nowhere and there were some logic issues for me but I think the logic issues were more just because it wasn't well explained and I struggled with that a little bit I wanted it to be more explained I wanted to, to know more about how this came to be and I think that that part was a little bit rushed I don't love the type of magic that is used and I just overall that part of the story didn't really work for me so I think this is going to end up being a three star I think like I said it did a lot of what it did really really well but there were certain things that were not my personal favorite I think if you are somebody that doesn't need a lot of explanation to your magic and you just want a story with some grit this is pretty dark if you want a story that gives you more to chew on then definitely give this a try again it was well written and I will be recommending this in the future so I'm glad that I have it so that is the first book done. We are only two hours in. So that means we need to do another spin and see what my next read is going to be. So remember, we are still in the out of my comfort zone wheel, which is slightly terrifying, but ow. we are going to be doing out of my comfort zone for the rest of the evening. So let me see if I can get you guys on a better angle to see this. Okay, so I'm going to do another spin. I'm slightly scared. I don't want to end up on wild. I don't think I am to a point yet where I want wild and I definitely don't want TBR vet. But other than that, I think I'm good with pretty much anything. This thing spins forever. Okay, so that is just barely on least used format, which is slightly annoying because I just finished a least used format, but that's okay. Um, now I need to think about what physical books I have out of my comfort zone that I want to pick up. So I'm going to go look at my TBR, look at my shelves a little bit, and I'll be right back. So I now have a helper. Um, Ali, say hi. Say hi. Okay, no, I got it. I... <laughs> Move, I gotta film something. Get down. Thank you, sir. So I can't decide on my next read. I have two physical reads that I could choose from. So I have put up a poll on Instagram. I will let you guys know what the final decision is once it pops up. I will put it up here for you guys. But my two choices are Radiance by Grace Draven. This is a, I think, marriage of convenience fantasy romance that I've heard some really good things about. And it's not in my comfort zone because it is a marriage of convenience, which is not a trope that I typically enjoy. So this, this one, yeah, it's out of my comfort zone for sure. The other option is A House of Ash and Shadow by Leia Stone. I honestly, Leia Stone was not on my radar at all. I had heard she did some like shifter romance and that really wasn't my thing. But this is actually a young adult fantasy romance about Faye and a magical academy which sounds interesting. It's out of my comfort zone because it's YA fantasy romance and you guys know that I just haven't been reading as much YA recently, but the ones that I have picked up have overall been really good. So I think that this would be a potentially good choice, even though I'm a little apprehensive about it. I think it could be a good choice. So these are my two options. I will put up the poll once it has been decided and that is what I will be reading next. 
Okay, friends, so it is now 8.12, which is about 3 hours and 15 minutes into the readathon. And as you guys saw, the winner of the poll was Radiance by Grace Draven. I've heard so many good things about this. People were shouting about it in the comments and telling me how good it was. I'm only 50 pages in, but I wanted to give you guys my initial impressions. It's definitely what I expected, yet not all at the same time. I think that I'm going to struggle a little bit because I want this to be kind of an enemies to lovers situation. They don't find each other attractive. They are two different species and they have been arranged in marriage to form a political alliance between the Kai and the humans. And I think it's a certain, like, a certain kingdom of humans, but I forget exactly what they're called now. Anyway, that's all I've really gotten is they've met, they've married, and they're going, she's going back to the Kai kingdom. She's human and he is whatever Kai is. I'm not really sure what that is. I know that they have like really sharp teeth and darker skin. I think they're a little bit taller. They eat different kinds of food, um, but she is human. So she has blunted teeth and different looking eyes and like her eyes are repulsive to him, but his teeth frighten all of like her people. So that part is interesting so far. I think, like I said, it would make a great enemies to lovers setup, a reluctant lover setup. But even though they're reluctant, you can definitely tell that they have a healthy appreciation for one another. They immediately off the bat are talking about how ugly the other one is. And it is kind of funny, like the banter is kind of amusing. I didn't dislike that part. It is a little bit repetitive, but like I said, I did like the banter, but I just... I think it's just me wanting it to be enemies to lovers, but it's not going to be. And I need to, I need to get over that. Um, I like the writing so far. It is reading super, super quick. I mean, I was able to read 50 pages in like 25 minutes. So I'm hopeful that I will be able to finish this tonight. We shall see because your girl's getting tired and I unfortunately did not get off work tomorrow. So I still have to be at work at 7 a.m., work a half day, and then come home and get back to reading. So I will update you guys when I'm probably closer to halfway. I just wanted to give you some initial impressions. Okay, so it is about 1030. I'm about to take my makeup off and get ready for bed, but I want to do a quick update because I am about halfway into Radiance and I don't really have a lot to tell you guys right now. It's fine. I'm a little bit bored, which I'm not overly surprised by. This is definitely a very heavily character focused book. There's not really a whole lot of plot to speak of in the first half. I've heard that there is plot coming, but I definitely haven't seen it yet. And their relationship is just very cute. It's very heartwarming. It's very just nice. They like each other and they talk to one another and they're trying to learn about one another. But it's just not my preferred fantasy romance relationship. Friends to lovers is just not what really does it for me. However, the writing is good. The relationship is cute. It's fun. I think that they're warming up to each other nicely. So I absolutely see why people like this book or love this book. But for me, I just want something a little bit more. I want something more to grip my attention other than them just being really cute and having sweet moments with one another because that works for a little while. But then I tend to kind of lose interest a little bit and wish that I was learning more. So that's where I'm at right now. I am a little, like I said, over halfway. And so I think that I will be able to finish this pretty quickly tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish it tonight. I'm probably going to end up with about an hour to go, which is not ideal, but I have a huge headache. And so I think that better to just stop it now, get some good rest in, wake up refreshed and ready to go tomorrow rather than potentially wake up with another headache and not really want to read any. So that's my plan. I think I'm going to spend in the morning though. We will be able to do the in my comfort zone wheel. I am going to switch it up tomorrow. The way the wheels work is you can spin a different wheel each day, but whatever wheel you pick for that day, you have to continue on with that day. So tomorrow, I think I'm going to switch over to in my comfort zone. We'll see how much of my TBR I get read for in my comfort zone. And depending on that, we'll decide what wheel I do for Saturday. But yeah, yeah, I'm going to get up bright and early, go to work for a couple of hours, finish off Radiance, and I will chat with you guys in the morning. Good morning, friends. It is 7 a.m. and I am about to head into work. It is 15 hours, no, 14 hours into the readathon, and your girl is tired, but we're here, we're reading, we're doing the things. I've had an interesting morning because I was running late because I wanted to sleep in as much as humanly possible and thought, oh, I'll be fine. It doesn't take me that long to get ready. And then proceeded to spill my coffee everywhere and had to clean that up. And anyway, we're here. I'm doing this update really quickly 
quickly because I'm actually about five minutes late, so we're going to make this fast. First, I wanted to tell you that I finished Radiance by Grace Draven. I ended up liking this one. I won't say that it's going to be a new favorite. I think it'll be a higher three star. As a general rule, I was relatively bored by it, but overall, I think that it was well written. I can absolutely see why people love this book. There is someone literally climbing places that they should not be climbing. Please hold. Sorry, we have construction workers at work and he decided to climb over the railing by the road and walk through the ditch. Anyway, I think I was saying that I really liked Radiance, but I do think it's going to be a higher three star. It was well written. The relationship was sweet, but there wasn't a lot of plot to speak of. It was overly descriptive and just not really my kind of you know, preferred relationship. Not bad, just not my preferred relationship. So if you're a fan of arranged marriage, friends to lovers, a sweet relationship, and you like some politics kind of mixed in, I think this could really work for you. I think this would be good for fans of Blood Mercy. Actually, more that I think Blood Mercy would be good for fans of this. But yeah, I had a good time with it. Glad I read it. I don't know if I will continue on in the series, but maybe because I've heard that the second book does have a little bit more plot. Also did another spin before I left for work this morning because I knew that I was probably going to finish that on the way to work or very shortly after I got to work. Today I'm going to do the in my comfort zone wheel and we got my most used format. So for this one I'm going to be listening to the audiobook of Mislaid in Parts Half Known by Shauna McGuire. This is the most recent Wayward Children's novella about kids that go into their perfect world but their perfect world may not be all that it seems and then sometimes they get sent back and they're trying to deal with how to survive in our world. It has dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs and I'm excited to see what this one is about. Okay so I'm finally headed home from work. I'm excited to join Sprints again but I wanted to really quickly while I was headed home tell you guys that I did get halfway through this late in parts have known while I was at work today and I'm liking it. I was expecting it to take place in a world because there are dinosaurs on the cover but as of right now we haven't really gotten to the world yet and so I'm just I'm looking forward to that. I like that we're following Anne again who is the one that we followed in the previous story so I'm enjoying that. Sumi is still one of my favorite characters. I actually don't really like her book but I like her as a character so I just wanted to give you guys a quick update. Okay guys so we are about 20 and a half hours into the readathon and I have now finished my third book which is Mislaid in Parts Half Known. I liked this one, but I think it was just a little bit misleading for me. Overall, I think that the writing is really fun. I liked seeing all of our characters together. I enjoyed um, getting to visit Ancy again. This book almost felt like a continuation of her story rather than a new separate novella, which was fine with me because I liked her story. I liked the themes and the tone of her story. I will say that I did not love the fact that, like I said, the cover is a little misleading. It kind of makes you think, okay, maybe we're going to spend some time in a world, a world with dinosaurs. But in true Wayward Children novella fashion, we are only there for like 10 pages, maybe less, and then they immediately move on to a different world. And I just wish we spent more time in the world. That is something that I find so incredibly interesting about these stories is the different worlds that she can create and how they relay back to the characters and the characters like thoughts and feelings. But we don't spend any time there. And so I do get a little bit frustrated by that. And if we do spend time there, we're not like it's skimping over a lot of the world parts and going to the character part, which is fine. I just don't think it's going to give me what I'm truly looking for out of these, which is more fantasy. And it's definitely more character driven. While I do have complaints about it, I think that this one was entertaining and I wanted to keep picking it up. I was engaged while reading it. The first quarter did move a little bit slow for me, but once they kind of got to the more adventure part, like I said, I really liked all of our characters together. I am unsure if I will continue on in the series that there's going to be five or six more novellas. If there's one or two, I probably will finish it off, but I don't know. I just don't think these are ever going to give me what I'm truly wanting out of them, which is okay. We need to do another spin. Okay, so remember we are still in our comfort zone. We landed on less than 300 pages. So let me have a think and I will be right back with what my next book's gonna be. 
Okay, so I think I'm gonna go with Blood Price by Vela Roth. This is the prequel novella to Blood Mercy, which I have really, really enjoyed. Blood Price, I think, follows a different couple and it's kind of an introduction to the world. So I'm gonna go grab my Kindle and download that. We are about to switch over to sprints on my channel, so I need to type a few loose ends and then I'll get started on Blood Price. Okay, so we're gonna take a little reading break really quick because I just had several packages dropped off from the post guy, post lady, post lady, and I wanted to open them for you guys really quickly. So the first one that we have is my broken binding package, and I know what this is. This was an impulse buy. Um, I actually already own this book, but it has been revised, and so I wanted to get the pretty revised copy. And it is really pretty. So this is it. But these are the edges. Look at those edges. Oh, so pretty. I really enjoyed the bone season when I read it. I gave it a three star, but I loved the mask falling. So I'm excited to read these again. Give the new versions a go. This one I'm guessing is from Jonathan because he told me to check my front door earlier today. I don't know what he would have sent me. But let's find out. Oh my goodness. I'm not gonna read this out loud, but like, Jonathan, you're not allowed to make me cry, friend. That's not allowed on 72 hours. But Jonathan got me Gods and Monsters by Kayla Edwards. I had no clue that this was a brick. Did you know this was a brick, Jonathan? Because I did not know that this was a brick. But I think this is a slightly urban setting fantasy romance, if I'm not mistaken. It says, death is only the beginning. I'm really excited to read this, so. Yay! Thank you so much, Jonathan. That is absolutely precious. He knows that I have not had a particularly great week slash couple of weeks. And so you guys are just amazing. He and Nat both sent me some goodies. And the community here is just absolutely freaking incredible. And if 72 hours didn't constantly remind me of that, you guys are amazing. So I am 50 pages into Blood Prize. Oh. Blood price. There we go. And I wanted to give you guys an initial update. I'm liking this. I'm liking the writing style. I knew I liked Bella Roth's writing, but I don't know if I missed something or what, but this just, it's moving a little faster than I expected it to. Basically, we have this lady of the estate and her brother has killed another lord's brother and father and there's apparently a feud between these two families and their love is kind of forbidden. She respects this lord but he is demanding a price for his family. I feel like I've missed some context and I don't know, Maria said something about reading this book after book four when the characters were introduced so I don't know if I should have waited to read this. Some of the reviews don't really act like they waited to read it. They read it as kind of a prequel so I don't know but I feel like I'm just missing something. It seems like their relationship just happened out of the blue. Suddenly she wanted to marry him and they loved each other and she respected him and I'm like but where did this come from? Because uh, five minutes ago you were trying to figure out how to pay your brother's debt. So I just, I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit rushed. I liked the prologue a lot. I thought the prologue set things up really, really well. So I'm just hoping as I continue on into the story, things start to develop a bit more because Blood Mercy is such a slow burn. It like takes your breath away when they finally get together because it's just cute seeing their interactions beforehand. And I feel like this just kind of hit the ground running. All of a sudden they were married. So I just, I think I needed to pump the the breaks a little bit expose me to them and their relationships and who they are as individuals then go back to the romance side of things so we'll see how that ends up going but obviously I love the writing Bella Roth just has such a way of drawing you into the story and making you feel I'm trusting her because I really love Cassia and Lucian Okay, so we have done the chatty bit again, and I have been convinced to soft DNF slash just put down for now with every intention of going back to it, blood price. I think it's just, I'm not really, I'm not in the mood. I read Radiance, which was very like, not similar, but similar enough in vibes. And that like lovey-dovey relationship thing that's just not really my jam. So I, I feel like for now, I am going to just put this down. I'm going to come back to it. I mean, I come back to it in this readathon, but I am going to come back to it. So I need to put you guys somewhere a little bit more stable so that we can do another spin. All right, time for our next spin.
Okay, so that worked out really well and got us most used format, which I think I'm going to go with one that was not on my TBR. The library hold came through like right as the readathon was starting, which was perfect. And that is Last Town by Blake Crouch. This is the third and final book in the Pine series and I will be completing a series. Look at me go. I'm not really going to talk about what the third book is about or anything, just kind of give you my general thoughts and feelings. But Pines is about a guy that is an FBI agent and he goes on a mission to look for a, I believe other agent that has gone missing and he goes to this town wakes up and cannot remember who he is why he's there or anything about himself and all of the townspeople are being a little bit shady I don't really want to tell you anything more than that because I feel like it does have a really good twist but yeah I'm excited to finish this series off and finally see how it's gonna end Okay, so 22% into Last Town, and book series is just so easy to read. Blake Crouch definitely has a very thrilling... This one starts right where the last one left off, so we're just jumping straight back into the story, and it definitely feels like the giant epic battle at the end of a fantasy book or something like that, where everything is just going to go hard and go fast until we wrap up the story. I am curious to see where it ends, but I am hoping that we don't just have one big, like, battle scene. I think that there's a little bit more to it than that. This series is one that that I enjoy but I wouldn't say is like an all-time favorite series for me. It's fun but it doesn't have quite the substance that I would want it to. Either way I'm having a good time and that's all that really matters. So I am going to listen to that. I am crocheting my blanket. I and you it looks awful right now but my ends I had forgotten to do a chain. I don't know how I forgot to chain, but I did. So my ends were a little bit wonky and I basically just frogged the whole thing and started over because I wasn't that far into it. I Wonky ends drive me crazy and I really want this year to be a blanket that I'm proud of and one that I will want to use. So I frogged it and started over. I am almost back caught up again. I have about seven rows until I'm back and caught up. So that's what I'm going to do while I'm listening to this and we're going to see how caught up I can get. So I have finally gotten food. It's been forever, I feel like, since I ate lunch, and I tried to make breakfast for dinner, and it did not go as planned, so I ended up having to order food, and I have eaten it, and now I feel much better. We are now about 27 and a half hours into the readathon. At some point, this math is going to get a lot harder to do, and I have now finished The Last Town by Blake Crouch, and I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it. I think I'm going to end up giving it a three star. I had a really fun time with it. I thought that it was entertaining. It kept me engaged, but it did feel kind of repetitive, and it definitely felt like one big battle scene until probably the last, I don't know, 15-20% or so. I think that I like the way it ended, although some of it just feels a little bit, it's not ridiculous, but but just, I don't know. I, I liked the way it ended, but I don't, <laughs> there were just parts that made me literally like, what the heck? I, I had fun with it. I think it's going to be a three star. I'm not going to spin right now for my next read. I need to do a little bit of editing, so I'm going to do that really quickly and get this vlog up to date so that I can get it out ASAP for you guys, and then we will come back here in just a little bit and I will do another spin. All right, it's 9.30 and it's new spin time. I don't know what I want. I don't know if I can even finish anything else at this point. Like, theoretically, I told Monica I'd stay up till 1 a.m. We're gonna see if that happens because I've been up since 5 a.m., but I would love to get another book done. So I know I don't want TBR Vet because the only option that I have for that is pretty long. Other than that, I guess I don't really have a preference because I don't know what I'm gonna read. So we're just gonna see what I get. And again, maybe it's not over 300 pages. Worst case, I'll finish it in the morning. I don't know what I'm doing with myself. We're just here. So you guys saw that I got author that I've read from before, which is honestly one of the perfect prompts for an in my comfort zone spin. And it gave me several different options. But the one that I think I'm going to go with is The Haunting of the Gillespie House by Darcy Coates. Obviously, I've read from Darcy Coates before, and this one is pretty short. It's about 150 pages. The print is big, so it's going to be easier for me to read at 10 o'clock at night. And I know that I can get it finished before the evening is over. But if I manage to finish this, which I should easily be able to do before then, I will do another spin and just carry that book over into tomorrow. But I wanted to finish one more book tonight because my kind of like unofficial goal for today was to have read five books. I really want to go hard for this readathon, and if I finish this, then this will be my fifth book so far. I'm gonna start this. There's only 10 minutes left of the sprint, so I don't have a whole lot of time to read, but I'm hoping I can get in a chapter or two before we go back.
man, I look tired. Uh, yeah, it is 11 o'clock at night, and I don't even know how many hours we are now, but I am halfway through the Gillespie house, and I'm liking this a lot. It is just very haunted house vibes, but in a fun way. I think that for me, haunted houses work best when you can like build up the tension and things don't seem to get too spooky too fast. And this is doing a really good job of that. We have Elle who has been hired to stay at the Gillespie house while they are on vacation. She's basically going to be a house sitter, but there are strange things happening in the house and she's convinced that there was someone in the home. Only to find out it was probably rats and she needs to go down into the basement to set some traps, but there's there's a whole lot more to this house than meets the eye. This book is really short, so I don't want to give you guys a whole lot more information than that, but I'm having fun with it so far. Like I said, I am halfway. I think that I can very easily finish this in the next little bit. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to go ahead and read the short stories that are in the back because probably a solid like, I don't know, a few quarters of this is actually short stories that Darcy has written and I do really like to read those, but I'm not sure if I'm going to read them for this readathon or if I'm going to read them later, but we'll just kind of see what time it is when I get finished and then I'll decide from there. Okay, so I'm like 100 pages into The Haunting of Gillespie House, and this chick, she keeps calling the house owners, acting like there's somebody in the house, there's somebody after her. Call the police! Don't call the homeowner who's already irritated with you for calling her at like 3 o'clock in the morning and there being nothing there. What's she gonna do? Come running with a battle axe? Like, come on, chick! It is midnight on Friday night, and I have officially finished the Gillespie house, and I liked this one. I think that Darcy Coates always does such a really good job of setting the scene and making you feel just kind of creeped out with what's going on. Especially in the first half of this book, like I could see something out of the corner of my eye and I was like, um, what is going on? I think it was just my hair, but you know. <laughs> but as the story went on and we got a little bit more into like the meat of what was going on, I thought that that was really interesting. But I do feel like that this story needed to be longer. Darcy's pretty good at the short form story, but in this particular case, I feel like it just didn't really lend itself to enough setup. Up. We went from this creepy house that was making funny noises and kind of being realistic about what was potentially happening, not jumping straight to the supernatural, to having like these visions and flashbacks and her just being like, yeah, cool, I'm a psychic now. And I'm like, wait, what? That doesn't make any sense to me. We've not set this up. We haven't talked about this. One minute you're fine, the next minute you're having a dream, and you're just like, yep, I'm psychic, cool. So I just, I wish that that had been set up more because it really threw me completely out of the story. I felt like everything that had been set up to that point just didn't really matter. So I did not love that part of it. But overall, I like I said, I had fun with it. I think I'm going to give it a three star just because of just how little setup there was for a lot of stuff. Elle just kind of took things in stride. She didn't really put a lot of thought into anything. She didn't question anything. Some of her motives just didn't really make sense to me. But yeah, I enjoyed it overall. I'm glad I read it. I am not sure. I think I'm going to read a couple of the short stories because we currently have about... 30 minutes left of sprints and I'm not going to do another spin tonight. I'm not going to get anything else really read. So I'm just going to read as many of the short stories as I can. But my camera battery is dying, which means it is time for me to shut up and go to bed and I will see you guys in the morning. Okay, we're doing a live sprint. I'm doing my in my comfort zone wheel today and this is going to be for time too. So fingers crossed we get something. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is currently Saturday morning and I feel refreshed and ready to take on the day. I have a quick appointment this morning. Um, I'm gonna be going out with my mom. We have kind of our standard Saturday appointment. That's gonna be fun to just kind of get out of the house for a little bit. Last night, I finished The Haunting of Gillespie House. I did read a couple of the short stories and ended up really enjoying those. I would give the short stories four stars. Had a lot of fun with those. And this morning, I tried to do a live spin slash sprint and my camera proceeded to fall and then the battery died. <laughs> so I will show you guys the screen recording, but just trust me that I got wild on the in my comfort zone wheel. And I think I'm going to be starting with a longer one today. I would love to get three books done today. That's kind of my tentative goal. However, I'm going to be starting with a really long one. I did look though, and the audiobook is 10 hours, which on three times speed is around a three and a half hour audiobook which feels doable. However, the other books on kind of my radar are also 
longer. So we'll see how this goes, especially when I have to be out for a couple of hours today. But my tentative plan for this is to read The Slaying of the Shadow Prince by Helen Schur. I have been dying to read Blood and Steel, but Blood and Steel is just a little bit too long for this readathon. So I'm going to go with the companion novel in this world. This is part of the Made for Monsters, I think, series. And that was like four different sets of standalones written by four different authors, but in the same world as their normal like setting. I don't really know what this one is about. I know that it has, I think, a shadow daddy in it, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure what tropes this is, honestly. Um, I'm hoping it's enemies to lovers. Like I said, it's pretty long. It's like 400 pages, but the audiobook says that it's 10 hours. So we're going to attempt and see how this goes because I do really want to read this and I'm kind of craving something that I can like sink my teeth into, something that I'm really going to enjoy because I've been reading a lot of three stars. So we're going to pick up something a little longer, something that I think I'm going to have a good time with. And if I don't get to more books, I don't get to more books. It's a-okay. Sorry, I've got the window open because Ollie loves to sit and look out the window. I am home from our lunch shenanigans and I, have, I started slaying the Shadow Prince and I'm having a really good time with this so far. This is about Drew, who is the daughter of a nobleman, but she is turned ranger, so she knows how to fight, and she's out there killing wraiths who killed her mother and, I believe, her brothers. And then we have the warriors of Thesmar that come and they're claiming to be helping, but she realizes that one of them is actually half Shadow Wraith, but he hasn't told anyone, no one else knows, and for now she's keeping his secret because she needs his help. I think that the banter between the two of them is a lot of fun. This is definitely enemies to lovers. I mean, it literally says on here, mortal enemies to monster lovers, so I don't know why I didn't put the two and two together before. Their, like I said, their banter is really good. I like that we're getting some backstory and some character development between the two of them. They definitely feel feel like they're not just cardboard cutter kind of characters. The writing is really good. I'm enjoying the world and kind of how that is developing. The only complaint that I have right now is I feel like some of the sexual stuff is coming a little bit too fast. I prefer for my romanticies to be super slow burn and to kind of get that tension there. And maybe they do have a little snipes here or there that could even have like, why are you looking at me? You must think I'm so hot kind of thing. For the more like sexual stuff like wet dreams and stuff like that to be a little bit further into the story. What I will say though is she is doing a good job of still keeping Drew kind of wariness, even though she is attracted to Telomere, she's not like all in that fast, which I, I do appreciate. So overall, I'm having a great time with this and I cannot wait to continue reading. I'm currently halfway through slaying the Shadow Prince and I'm still having a really, really good time. I am really enjoying just still their interactions between one another and I'm having a lot of fun and I'm just gonna roll with having a lot of fun. But we are switching over from Monica to Lexi Sprints and I am about to go get McDonald's because why not? And McDonald's delivered to me is just gross. I'm going to physically leave my house and go get me some french fries because I am just, I am dying. I am craving some of their french fries. Somebody mentioned it earlier and now that's all I'm gonna be able to think about until I get them. We are done with Slaying the Shadow Prince. And I had a really good time with this. I think this world is really cool. I liked the writing. I liked our main characters. I liked that the monster was not the type of monster that I've seen in some of the other Mortal Enemies to Monster Lovers series. I thought that that was a fun take on it. I don't know. I just, I liked this book. I thought it was a good time. I think I'm going to give this a four star and I am very excited to continue on into Blood and Steel. Steel, Drew and Telomere just, I don't know, it's enemies to lovers, but not for very long. I will say that they are not enemies for very long, and I don't feel like they're ever true enemies, but they did have some pretty good banter, and I don't know, I just had a fun time. I'm hoping this will be a good introduction to Blood and Steel. We do have Wilder, who is the main guy in Blood and Steel in this, and he's a pretty prominent secondary character, so I'm hoping that that gives some good footing and some good groundwork. This is a prequel to Blood and Steel, which I knew but didn't know going in. So again, I'm hoping this gives a good foundation. And yeah, first four star of the readathon. I had a really good time. So that means that it's time to do another spin. It is currently 7.15 and we are less than 24 hours to the end of this. And I really still want to read like four more books. I don't think that's happening, but we're, we're going to see. So I'm going to back you guys up. I'm going to bust out the wheel and let's see what we end up with. There's a little bit of a glare, but... New release. Um, 
Yeah, the book that I was planning to read is not a new release. Ugh. I'm gonna have to think on this. I may end up using my respin, but I'm gonna kind of look and see what I have and then I will get back to you guys, but I could end up maybe using a respin. Okay, I do have an option. I do have one that I can read for this, but honestly, I just, we haven't used a respin yet. Why don't we just respin for the drama? Because that's not what I was planning to read and we need some, we need some drama. I feel like there hasn't been enough. Okay, so let's do my first respin. Least used format. I think I can make that work. Okay, so least used format I think we've already talked about is a physical book or a reading with my eyeballs book. I definitely tend to use audiobooks more than I do physical books. And because I am getting tired and it's 730, I think I'm going to do a short book for this one and do Turtle Boy. There we go. Turtle Boy by Keelan Patrick Burke. This is a horror author that I have read several books from and really enjoyed all of them. They're all really weird and kind of like twisted and follow different topics. This is one I really don't know that much about. It says school is out and summer has begun. We have 11 year old Timmy and his best friend Pete and they live in Delaware. It becomes a place of magic, hidden treasure, and discovery. On a day they encounter a strange boy sitting on the bank of Myers Pond. Rumor says he may hide turtles the size of Buicks and everything changes. I don't know what turtles the size of Buicks is, but we're going to find out. This is not very long. It is around 100 pages, so I think I can knock this out pretty quick, and then maybe we'll get in one more spin before the night ends. I have finished Turtle Boy, and I'm not exactly sure what to think about this. Kaelin Petroburg always does some really weird stuff with his books, but they always have like a bigger meaning, a more hidden meaning to them, and... Yeah, I don't, I, mm, I'm unsure. This is apparently a series, first of all. Not really sure how it's a series, not really sure if I'm going to continue on in the series, but it is weird and I don't really know how to feel. I like the writing. I think that it was a good take on like a young boy and following around 11 year old in his head and kind of as he pieces all of this stuff together. As an adult, I know what the ending was trying to tell him, but I don't know if the boy ever really figured that out. And I thought that the ending was good. It kept me entertained, but I don't know. The pacing in this was kind of slow to start. I, I'm i unsure. I'm unsure. I, I think maybe it'll be a three. Could be a four if I sit on it. I'm not really sure how I feel about it. I feel like I'm having a crisis on my rating of this book. So I'm just not going to rate it right now. And we'll come back to that. Now I have to decide it is nine o'clock. I really do need to do another spin. But I have no idea what to read. Like not a freaking clue. Any book that I still have that I like really want to prioritize, especially in my comfort zone is on the longer side. And I just don't I don't know what to read. We're gonna do the spin. We're gonna see what I end up with. And then I may end up asking my patrons if they have any suggestions because I am at a loss. I don't know that I will be up more than about three or four hours more. And we do have talking bits and stuff in these sprints. So it's not like I'm gonna be reading for four hours straight because the readathon ends tomorrow and I just don't wanna carry over three or four hours of a book, you know? So anyway, um, let me grab the wheel and let's just see what we get and we'll we'll go from there. Wild is so incredibly unhelpful. I don't want it. I don't want wild. Okay, we got wild. I don't want to do another spin because there's one particular book that I do want to try to get to tomorrow. And so I may end up needing a respin for that. And I don't want to be down to no respins. I know I still have two respins left, but like, okay, I'm going to say the same thing I said last time. I'm going to go see if I can find a book. If I can't find a book, we'll do a respin because I do have two left, but like, dadgum it. <laughs> Okay, I think Crisis has potentially been averted, and I think I'm going to go with The Bone Witch by Ivy Asher. This is an Apolycon author, so I will be checking off one of those boxes. It's more of an urban fantasy romance, I think, about witches, and I don't mind that. It's I have read a lot of urban like fantasy in the past. I like a good urban fantasy every once in a while. Plus, maybe it'll shake it up a little, it'll be something kind of different. It says the audiobook is nine hours and ten minutes. I'm not going to be doing the audiobook for this. I think I'm going to be doing the ebook, but it always just kind of helps me gauge how long a book is because 
because page count is just so different based on font and margins and all this other stuff. So that, that tends to help me kind of wrap my brain around how long something is. And I think I can maybe get it done tonight, which is my goal. So I am going to download that and hopefully I really like it because then I can meet her at a polygon. Okay, so I'm reading The Bone Witch and I'm 10% in and this could end up being a DNF. I'm not loving the writing. I'm not loving our main character. We basically start with her coming home from work and she walks in and there is a bag of bones sitting at her house and that means that she is now supposed to become the like leader of her witch coven and there's a bunch of things that she has to do in order to bind herself to the bones. That's all I know so far but I am learning that I really don't like pop culture references in my books. I don't mind an urban setting. I don't mind a modern setting but stop telling me about Joe Jonas and the Witcher and Obi-Wan Kenobi and Harry Potter. Like literally all of those things have been referenced and I am... 27 pages in and it's just too much. I realized this when I was reading um, KG Preservation Society. I just don't like it. It takes me out of the story and I roll my eyes pretty much every time I see it. One of the things she says was like on the prowl for a bed buddy and this one is like body checked Joe Jonas as hotter, beefier, and more masculine looking older brother. I don't know. It's just not the way that I want you to describe a love interest to me. It does not do it for me. I get what she's trying to do. I get the image she's trying to portray. And don't get me wrong. I love Jonas Brother as much as the next girl, but I don't necessarily want it in my fantasy books. <laughs> I'm just having a little bit of trouble with that. I'm going to give it till at least the end of this chapter, but I just don't know if right now I'm really in the mood for this. It may be something that I come back to later. I'm not necessarily going to like hard DNF it, but I'm not sure I'm in the mood for that tonight. So I'm going to give it a few more pages, hoping that maybe this is the love interest. And if I really like him, that will make up for her. But she's just kind of like really quirky and over the top and pretty much everything she does, which is going to be kind of exhausting, I'm afraid. <sighs> I'm going to DNF the Bone Witch, at least soft DNF it. I might come back to it. Like I said, this isn't a Polycon author. And honestly, I could just be tired and not in the mood for the like funny quirky style of writing because that's definitely what this is leaning into is just more of like a quirky character. And I'm just not sure that I'm feeling that. So I'm going to put it down. I got about 17% of the way into it. Things just weren't really gripping me. And we are too late in the evening and too late in this readathon for me to read something that I'm just going to want to put down and pick up my phone instead. So we may come back to that later. More likely going to come back to Blood Price than I will this. But I feel like it's more of a soft DNF than a I'm never going to pick it back up. I hated it kind of thing. I just, yeah, I'm not feeling it tonight. So... That means we need another wheel spin. So we'll see what I'm going to be reading next. I don't know what that just landed on because I heard it tick when I turned it around, which does not count. So what did that just land on? It is kind of hard to tell what that landed on. I'm not really sure, but when I flipped it around, it said TBR Vet. So I guess we're just going to go with TBR Vet because it stuck on Friend Recommends, but then immediately when I flipped around, it went to TBR Vet. So I guess I'm going to go with TBR Vet. Um, I do have a book for this, so let me go grab that. And I don't know whether Maria is going to be excited or terrified. Okay, I have the book. I don't remember if I put this on my in my comfort zone wheel of the TBR or the out of my comfort zone wheel for the TBR. I don't remember. I'm too lazy to go look. But I feel like it could go for either one. And that is The Thief by Megan Wallen Turner. This is a fantasy book, which is definitely in my wheelhouse. It is a young adult fantasy, but when I was kind of reading the back of it and looking into it a little bit more, it's a young adult fantasy that over time I think leans a little bit more adult. And it also is more of like an epic style young adult fantasy which is more in my comfort zone so I think I'm just going to go with it for the in my comfort zone wheel for a couple of reasons those which are logical valid very reasonable arguments and the actual reason which is this is the only TBR vet that I have so I know that this is about a, a guy that gets that says he can steal anything and he actually gets caught trying to make a wager about stealing something and ends up in the king's prison in order to get released from the prison he is 
being tasked with stealing something that is incredibly hard to steal. We don't know what that is, but we know that's how he's going to get his freedom. I've heard a lot of really good things about this book. Maria from Maria Might Read That absolutely adores this series, I think, and she's not the only one that I've heard mention good things. It is narrated by Steve West, who is a narrator that I really enjoy. It's only seven and a half hours, so honestly it's just kind of perfect to end the night. So initial impressions at 20% is I'm liking it. I think that it is well written. I like the main character. What is his name? Gen. I like Gen. He is very snarky and I want to know more about why he is so like cavalier about everything. I also would love to know how old he is. I don't really feel like that's been said. I know that this is a young adult story but at the same time he doesn't necessarily read super young, but young-ish, so I, I would just kind of like to know how old he is. Right now, the plot and pacing is very, very slow. We're just kind of in a lot of setup. They're traveling. You guys know how much I love traveling. I'm a little bored right now, but I'm hoping that the plot starts to pick up soon and we get to some kind of high situation because I don't really care about them traveling on horseback for 15%. But I do like the writing. I do like the characters, so I am intrigued to continue on. I just got the mail and oh my gosh, this is my favorite thing ever. Ugh. It's a cat. It's an angry cat, but an angry cat that's also kind of a dragon. And oh my gosh, I love it. Rachel, Rachel sent me this and it's incredible and I love it so much. I cannot wait to sit and use this as a reading pillow, but I do have an update for you guys. And I have finished The Thief that I started last night. I don't really have a ton to say about this book. It was generally good, but I don't have a lot of feelings on it. I think that it is very well written. It is definitely an adventure story. There was a little too much travel in there for me but once we got to the like heist type thing I did enjoy that there were mazes so I think I will continue on in this series but I do think this is going to be another three star from me for the readathon I had fun don't regret reading it but I just don't have a lot of thoughts on it so that's that I am going to be doing another spin here in just a minute because I need to figure out what I'm going to be reading and I think I think I'm gonna go with out of my comfort zone today. We're just gonna kind of spin the wheel and see what I end up with for the rest of the day because I'm flagging a little bit. I'm excited to finish off the day and see how much I can get read, but I also want to have a good time for the rest of the day. So if I get something and I just can't pick a book that I think I'm gonna like or that I want to read, I'll probably spin the comfort zone wheel and keep on trucking. Hopefully you guys are good with that. But yeah, this this is um this is amazing. And thank you so much, Rachel. Also thank you to Holly who sent me something incredible, a book and some cute coasters as well. So you guys spoil me. You are all just incredible, wonderful people. So thank you. So 50 pages into Broken Bonds, and I'm not hating it. Claire definitely thought that I was going to hate it, but I think that the writing is good. I'm intrigued by kind of what's going on. It does feel a little bit repetitive right now. I think that we're kind of going over the same stuff over and over again while not getting a whole lot of answers, but I'm intrigued on like what the bonds are and what their magic is and how this world works. It's definitely an urban fantasy, so it is set in our world. I think my biggest complaint right now is that the magic system in the plot kind of feels like it's revolving around sex. So basically, Basically, our main character has a gift that she does not want that is apparently very terrifying. So, so this is a world where you are like genetically compatible with a person and if you have sex with them, it's going to strengthen your power and theirs. It's called a bond. And our main character runs away from her bonds because she doesn't want her power strengthened because she has some kind of gift that's scary and she doesn't want to be forced into that. But they are after her because of course they want the power boost. I don't love the fact that the plot is kind of revolving around sex. So that's my biggest issue with this so far. I'm going to continue reading because I am intrigued and I'm not disliking it, but I'm hoping that that kind of changes soon. Okay, so I think I'm going to be DNFing Broken Bonds and not for any of the reasons that I expected. I truly thought if I didn't like this book, it was going to be because of the why choose aspect or the bullying aspect. But honestly, none of that really bothered me. It was the fact that I'm kind of bored. When I read Crowns, Oils, and Curses, it had an intricate plot and cool world and magic to go along with the enemies to lovers aspect that was set up. And this one is just, it feels like young adult, but with bullying and a lot of sex talk. And I'm just not vibing with the teenage drama 
Like the, I don't like her. She's catty. I'm going to pull her hair out. Why is she looking at him? She's got a good butt. That I just, I don't really care about that. I want to know about their gifts and what her gift is and how this magic system works and their relationships with one another. Because right now all the guys just feel the exact same. I can't really tell any of them apart. And I want to know more about like the friendships. And this just is not, it's not at all what I expected based off the other book that I've read from Jay Bree. So I think I'm going to be putting it down, accepting the fact that it's not the book for me. I'm surprised by the reason that I'm putting it down, but either way, yeah, we're going to put it down. Now I have no freaking clue what to read because we have four hours left, which means I do need to pick another book. I don't want to just sit here for four hours, but it's going to have to be something that I can finish within two to three hours because of just the fact that we're going to be talking and stuff. We're not going to just be purely reading for the next four hours. We're going to do another spin and I'm going to see what options I have that fit that because I am kind of at a loss right now as to what I can choose. Wild. Ugh. Okay, I think I found what I'm going to be reading next. I think I'm going to go with House of Ash and Shadow by Leia Stone. This is a young adult fantasy romance. Again, young adult, kind of out of my comfort zone. It is relatively short, so I think I can finish it. It's a school setting, and honestly, I've been wanting to read more school setting books because I have a video coming out for you guys pretty soon about school setting recommendations, and Realmathon is school setting. So it probably would seem like it would make more sense for me to read this during Realmathon, but I have a lot of other school setting books that I can read for that and they're longer which means I can't read them for this. So it's a trope I like but a genre that's more out of my comfort zone which feels like a little bit of a cheat but we're just gonna roll with it because this is the last book of the readathon. So I've downloaded the audiobook. Let's see if this one sticks a little bit better. I am now 50 pages into House of Ash and Shadow and I'm having a good time. I'm glad that I switched over to this because it is just fast paced, fun, kind of corny, definitely YA, but fun. This is following Fallon who was left for dead and she had a note strapped to her bassinet that said, cursed, do not touch. Everyone ignored her. Nobody wanted to touch her until a 19 year old boy, her now father, decided to take a risk and realized that it wasn't that if she touched someone that they would be injured. It's if they touched her, then she would experience agonizing pain. So she cannot be touched. She can't have any skin to skin contact. One day her father wakes up and he is very, very ill and she decides to go to the Gilded City to try to find a healer. The catch is they've been banished from the Gilded City and she is not allowed to go in. But a healer in training does decide to take the risk because in order to finish off and get one of the badges that he needs for infection, he is willing to do it for free. In the midst of trying to heal her father, he touches her and she realizes that she does not feel any pain from his touch. That's to where I am right now. I think that's the majority of kind of the plot so far. She is going to be going back with him to the Gilded City because apparently she has more magic than he's ever felt before, but she does not know that and doesn't understand any of that. Like I said, I'm having a lot of fun. It's definitely very fast paced. It's definitely YA, but kind of what I needed is just like a quick, mindless, just fun to finish off the readathon. It's what I wanted. And just like that, we have come to the end of 72 hours in the reading nook. Really quickly, let me tell you guys about House of Ash and Shadow. This is definitely young adult, and I don't know if it was just me and kind of being worn out and burnt out from the readathon because honestly, this is like my ninth or something book, not including. DNFs and I'm just I'm really kind of burnt out especially on shorter reads and so I don't know if it's me or if it's the book but this is very like teeny bopper kind of thing and I'm not I didn't really have the best time it wasn't bad but it's just very mediocre like high two star kind of situation maybe a low three star it just felt extremely young adult and not in a way where like the young adults like fireborn that i really enjoy young adult as in like teeny bopper ninth grade high school kind of situation so i didn't really love that i thought the idea was really really good but the execution did fall a little short for me it was a lot of just like is he gonna kiss me i don't know insta love kind of situation which is just it's not my favorite it's not uncommon in a young adult which is why this was in out of my comfort zone but it just is not my preferred thing to read about so while I liked the plot in this the high school drama kind of situation not really my favorite I wanted more magic school less high school and the fact that this is not set in a high school like world but still very felt very much so like a high school just wasn't really working for me 
So I am now done. I'm done reading <laughs> for the weekend. I did find some good reads. Slaying the Shadow Prince was by far my favorite read of the readathon. I love that couple so much and the more I think about it the more I enjoyed it. It makes me so excited for Blood and Steel because I think that this world is really cool and if she made me like that couple so much with just one book I'm thoroughly excited for Blood and Steel. Other than that I wouldn't say that I had any just like knockdown standouts but I did have some good reads and some series that I will continue on with. So over Overall, a mostly success, maybe a tad bit mediocre. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with us all weekend. It was so much fun. I got to see some new faces in the comments and just hanging out with you guys for an entire weekend. As always, we love to do it. If you participated in the readathon, let me know down in the comments how it went for you. What was your favorite book? Did you have a good reading weekend? Was it not quite what you planned? And if you didn't get a chance to participate, that's okay. Hopefully you can next time. Leave me a book emoji down there for the reading nook. And if you want some more weekend at times type reading vlogs where I just read as much as I can, check out this video where I read some anticipated horror for 24 hours. As always, links to my Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads are all in the description box below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to, and I will see you next time. Bye!